one question should you be fusing oh pardon clan father upcoming fragment fusion we are in the test server here after you watch this video you're going to know that answer 100 so let's get right into it What up team, it's your mom here back again with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Talking about the Fragment Fusion, what do you need to know? There's really only one thing you have to know about this champion. I'm going to show you instead of just explaining it because sometimes it goes over people's heads here. And listen, if you're a champion collector, if your idea and thought process is I'm going to go after every single fusion, you, there's no reason for you to watch this video and you probably know that coming into it. Now, if you are tight on resources, this is going to matter a lot here. Going over the kit, not going to help too much. I went over his kit and his look in a previous video I just did. That was a lot of fun. Just check that out if you haven't. For sure, I went over all the new legendaries and some of the animations were crazy. Him, not so much, but it is what it is. Now, one thing about this champion before I start testing and showing you the most eye-opening thing you're going to see on this champion is his ai right so when it comes down to his ai you have to consider who we're talking about plarium raid shadow legends what's their track record with any champion who removes any kind of buff or debuff and it's rather simple you need to have a debuff on the target for them to use this so he's not going to use it on his own as you would like so you're gonna have to waste a preset team thankfully we have it but it is a waste if you want to use this champion progression wise this is going to reach out to a lot of the early mid game players who are considering use for this champion but a lot of problems with this champion he's not a bad champion i don't want to just straight up say this guy terrible he's good but he's bad i know i said i wouldn't say that for one reason that has nothing to do with this kit he's bad because we're going to take a look at this really quick 65,000 health 3.8 thousand defense 263 speed accuracy whatever crit rate not crit capped he's bad because of one other champion let's just sort this by recently used first hello grush the mangler i'm a huge fanboy of this champion he's great 59,000 health 4.3 thousand defense 261 speed 239 accuracy so if you either scroll back or remember from the stats that I just showed you, for a pardon, they're very similar. I'm going to use them in the same run with three champions on Dragon Stage 23, which is Void, so no one gets the upper hand, the upper affinity here. We're going to compare how they do together with their healing, with whatever else they bring to the table here. Why am I comparing these two champions, which I would never do? Because Grush the Mangler is free. Lagan Reward Champion, free. He costs epic books. Oh, pardon, costs legendary books. They are both fully booked for this example here. Masters are going to be the same pretty much for both of them as I just closed out. I hate that function. Oh, you can misclick like that. I don't know why it's so close here. Anyways, this is Lydia. Hey, Lydia. So we have Grush the Mangler. We have a little bit different to maximize the synergy for Oh, pardon, Clan Father here. Like I said, they are both fully booked here. Both of these fine lads. And really quick, let's take a look at Opardon's base stats. 22,000.4 base HP. Higher than Grush at 19,000. As it should be. One's a legendary, one's a epic. The trade-off there is the legendary books. And of course, the increased amount of Ascension Potions you're going to need outside of that. They're the same for everything as far as what they cost. Now, base defense, 1,211. 1,321. This makes sense. This is another even trade-off. This guy's defense-based. Oh, pardon, is HP-based. So what's better? What's worse? That's up for debate and opinion-wise. HP is the ultimate, I guess, survivability stat. You cannot ignore defense, however. So with those two things in mind, I don't know. It is what it is. Base speed, 102 for Oh, pardon, 94 for Grush the Mangler, even though I equalize their speeds with gear, you would have that advantage if you did go for this fusion here, but he's not free. Crit damage, 50% on both, yes. Base resist, 50 and 45, so they're very, very similar. Speed is going to be the 
main factor that's very different 94 to 102 is quite significant but like i said ascension potions legendary books you cannot just avoid those and skip over that fact because one's much harder to get one's a lot easier to get in the grand scheme of things so let's go ahead and get into the test here so we can test both of these champions they are essentially the same in the purpose that they do i'm pretty sure that's fairly clear I didn't go over Grush's kit, but you know, Grush is Grush. So what do we have to do first? The answer is team setup. So let's go ahead and set up the three champions we're using here today. We'll have Lydia, we will have Opardon of course, and we're gonna pair it with Ninja. Opardon is blue, I believe. I hate how it's glitchy like that. Probably not just on the test server, even though I haven't noticed it. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna set let me see, uh, removing buffs, ba, ba, ba. attacks all enemies, heal allies, we want to use this first always, yes, and this second always, game, set, match, three, turn cooldown, three, turn cooldown, easy money, save, activate, let's go, avoid infinity, like I said, so no one gets a really fair advantage, alright, so we're doing the run here, we have the fusion, Lydia, as well as ninja here, here's are going to be popping off, we're going to CC a decent bit in these waves here, so it's going to be semi-consistent as far as testing goes you're going to get the general idea from watching both of these champions do their roles here ninja is in relentless gear which he probably shouldn't be to get 100 percent results but like i said it's not going to take a genius to be able to pinpoint from watching this the clear i'm not going to say better worse but the clear similarity between both of their kits what you get from them the fact that One's going to take a significant amount of resources. And the question is, what's the point of this? Murder, why are you showing us this? Is there a single reason here? We almost lost them, but we're going to do a decent amount of healing gear. I don't know if I'm going to be able to replicate this with Grush, but back to what I'm saying, what is the point? The point is, one's a free champion, one's an epic, one's a champion that you're going to have to spend energy for. So how worth it is it going to be that's why i specifically picked these two champions and showed them in the same kind of run here there's going to be a variance there's going to be rng but it's not going to be inconclusive when looking at this saying okay i can now see the difference between champion a champion b who is more valuable in what opinion or even if they break even it's going to favor grush the mangler because he costs nothing to get He's, you literally just have to play the game and log in and you get that champion. You're not getting an additional, I mean, granted, you don't have to five star Opardon. So like, that's the one benefit if you're skipping the fact that it is a fusion. If you pull him when you're watching this, hey, we're about to find out who's better, who's worse. So a minute and 50 seconds here, we have 870,000 heals, 986,000 damage from Opardon, even though we didn't really build him for damage but with that being said let's go ahead take him out and we're going to swap in grush the mangler here and let's go so now we're testing with grush here now in my opinion i think grush is going to do better overall as we can see we have attack down we have decreased crit damage now if i had to guess on what the results are going to be grush is going to be the worst throughput healer but he's going to be the better utility champion here and that's not really good for a fusion he does also have the leech as we can see there so all of these things they do make a difference they do make quite the difference here so we're gonna have to see what the recaps looking like i mean unless we get crit here but so far the runs are looking rather similar we do need these guys to get some turns so we can pump in some healing to make it relatively close this looks pretty decent rather similar to the run before here now we have cc we get to see grush's healing the healing in between waves aren't going to account for any champion here so it's going to be based on the turns and i think they die okay now we're on the dragon here it looks like a little bit slower we'll see how this compares to a minute and 50 seconds overall we don't have defense down unlucky decrease crit damage on the boss for sure there's the defense on weaken healing's coming through we got through that inhale exhale mechanic let's see what we got here okay we have 25 seconds left now grush is not cleansing that is one thing to consider here but opardon cleanses one random buff 
As we all know, I'm not a huge fan of that. Now, one thing Opardon does have, while it doesn't have attack down or decrease crit damage, he does have synergy with other champions that provide continuous heal. Is it going to be overkill? In my opinion, yes, like without a doubt. To be determined, I haven't tested it, but it's going to be overkill in my opinion. As we saw, he kept three champions alive in Dragon Stage 23. If you've done this before, you know. So let's take a look. Okay, so damage much higher as kind of I expected. Healing much lower once again. Not really sure where Ninja's healing came from. I don't think he has Life Drinker, but the point is, and this is what will hopefully kind of drive you to the idea of should you be fusing this guy, should you not? I hate the fact that people would ever have to consider fusing a champion for Faction Wars. It's very important. I understand that. If you need him for Faction Wars for the Barbarian, go for him. He's a great, great healer. But Sill of Drakes exists. We're just going to lower his value significantly because she can do so much by herself. So in my opinion, keep this in mind, in my personal opinion, this is an easy skip for anyone who isn't champion collecting or I know I, I get these comments all the time. This champion's bad, but I'm going to go for him anyways. Or I don't know why you showed him like people just go for champions anyways. Like I get it. You don't have to tell me that. But people will say it regardless, so if that's your plan, you don't even need to be watching this. But as far as the comparison between the two, I would rather have Grush in, I would say, 99% of the situations over someone like Opard and Clanfather. Maybe someone's going to figure out something that I haven't already. Some skill abuse with overhealing. There's that rare Orc Champion Ironclad who has to do with healing. I don't really think Opard and Clanfather's throughput as far as healing goes is anything crazy. I think he's on par, if not middle of the pack, compared to other healers that are legendaries. But listen, hopefully by showing you guys this comparison here with the free champion that you get, one lesser quality, I guess, from Legendary to Epic, this will help shape your decision going forward if you want to spend shards, energy, gems, all of that good stuff that you saved up for this fusion. Or if you want to save it for a guaranteed event down the line, the next fusion so you can kind of kick back and relax and we just get to see what happens from here so that's going to conclude my video today give me your thoughts give me your feedback what do you think about this champion are you in the same boat as me where he's like okay but there's someone better that you get for free or do you think he's op listen you're entitled to your opinion i would love to hear it as always guys if you enjoy this content smash that like button subscribe turn the notification bell and i will see you all in my next upload